What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about installing extensions. So I just wanted to walk through the process of downloading and installing extensions in SketchUp. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to get uh, you really want to take your training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUp essentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I just kind of wanted to walk you through the way that installing extensions in SketchUp works. And so a little quick background really quick. So extensions in SketchUp are what's known as Ruby scripts. They're basically scripts that are written in a language called Ruby. And what you need to do to get those up and running on your computer is you need to get them installed and also enabled. And so we'll talk about both of those in this video. So to start off, let's talk about a couple different places you can get extensions. So the first and the easiest way that you can get extensions is you can install them from the SketchUp extension warehouse. And any version of SketchUp after I believe 2016 just has this built into your browser or built into your uh, or built into your SketchUp window. And so the way that you can find that is you can go up to window extension warehouse. And so within the SketchUp extension warehouse, you can see a list of all of the different extensions that are available, as well as some things like the top developers, some different categories, and a search bar up above. And so if you were to go to one of these tools, like let's say for example, we went to this S4U make face, you can see how you get an information page about this extension. And so in the upper right hand corner, you'll, you'll notice that I'm logged in. You will need a login in order to install extensions from the extension extension warehouse and uh, as far as I've seen you don't get any spam or anything like that you just need to log in either with a Trimble account or with a Google account and so once once you get to this point you can see there's a lot of different options in here the one in particular we're worried about is the install button and so the easiest way to install these is just to click the install button and what that's going to do is that's going to download this it's going to ask if you want to install the extension and you can just click yes and that'll just install and it'll show up on your computer so you can see how this extension now shows up over here so that's probably the easiest way and the easiest place to get SketchUp extensions. And so before I talk about the other two, real quick, let's take a look at the extension manager. Because one thing I want to note is just because you've installed an extension doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to show up on your screen. You need to make sure that it's enabled. And so you can get to that by going to Window, Extension Manager. That'll pop up the extension manager page where you can manage which extensions are enabled and disabled. So these are all installed in SketchUp, but it's not loading the script right now for any of the ones labeled as disabled. So when you first load up SketchUp, um, if something is marked as disabled, then it's not going to load it when you first do that. And you can enable these by coming in here and clicking on the enabled or disabled button and clicking apply changes. And you can see how that toolbar now shows up. And sometimes you have to right click in your toolbar section to find that. And uh, I believe you can do that on the Mac version as well. I'm not 100% sure. But that's how you can enable and disable extensions. So the second way to download extensions and install them is to download them from the Sketchication Extension Warehouse. And so you can find the Sketchication Extension Warehouse, or they call it the plugin store, by going to sketchucation.com. And then over here on the right, there's a button for plugin store. And so when you click on the plugin store, that's going to give you access to their built-in plugin store. You'll notice this looks a little bit different, but one thing I really like to highlight on this extension store is you really want to, when you're first learning an extension, you want to click on the more info button. Because what the more info button will do a lot of the time is it'll actually take you to a forum post or another more information page. So you can see how this takes you to TomTom's more information page. But if you were to click on like... Um, I'm trying to find one of Fredo's. So if you were to click on Fredo Corner, a lot of the time what that'll do is that'll actually take you to a forum post where the developer actually talks you through the way that this works. And in this case, this one actually has its own page. And wow, I'm actually on this page. That's really cool. Uh, but a lot of the time what they'll do is they'll link to more information on how the extension works. So maybe this one. There we go. 
So you can see how this takes you to a forum post on Sketchication where people actually respond back and uh, they talk about things that worked and things that didn't work. A lot of the time the developer will actually respond back to you if something isn't working. So the plugin store, the Sketchication plugin store gives you a lot of information. And so you can either log in and click on one of these buttons in order to download the Ruby script files for these and you can install those manually, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Or you can go to the page for plugin store download under resources. And you can actually click the download now button and that'll that'll download a Ruby script file that'll allow you to access the Sketchication extension store within your SketchUp itself. And so that, if you have it enabled, so I'm gonna come in and enable that. Is going to give you access to that store directly within SketchUp. And one thing you know when you do that, because the Sketchication extension store is completely free, but you do need to select the right option. So when you click register, there's three different or four different options that pop up. There's the paid subscriptions down below, which have access to a lot of cool stuff. But there's also the free account option up above. So if you just want to sign up for a free account and download extensions, you can do that as well. And so with the Sketchication extension store, you can actually click the button for install over here to the right. And you can see how that's actually going to let you directly install those without having to download the Ruby script file. And then the final way to install extensions is you can go up to Window, Extension Manager. And if you go to the lower left hand corner, there's a button for Install Extension. What that allows you to do is you can click on this button. And so what you do when you click on that button is you can actually find the Ruby script files. And these are .rbz files. And you can actually install them within SketchUp. So like for example, if I was to select something like TrueBend, which I think I already have installed. But we'll go ahead and try this anyway. You could just click on it. Click the open button and that's going to install that in SketchUp and you can scroll down and you can now find that on this list. So if I scroll down, I can find TrueBend right here. So you can see how that's installed but it's still not showing up in here. Sometimes what you may need to do is you may need to click the button to enable it and click apply changes and then that menu will show up. And if that toolbar doesn't show up, um, so some extensions don't have toolbars, most of them do, but if that, ex if that toolbar doesn't show up after you've enabled the extension, try right clicking up above and finding that in the drop down here or by going to view toolbars and then checking the box for the toolbar there to turn the toolbar for the tool on and this does look a little bit different on Mac I think you go up to like view tool palettes or something like that so one thing I get a lot of questions on is if you've ever gotten the error message for a unsigned SketchUp extension. So if you click on this little gear right here, there's a button up here for loading policy. What loading policy does is that basically checks to see, um, it, it looks for a certain digital signature um, that people that have registered directly with SketchUp has. And it's a security thing, but a lot of the time you don't necessarily need those to be directly registered with SketchUp. So you can just click on this button for unrestricted. Now one thing to note about that is that does mean that you're installing extensions from people that haven't been okayed by SketchUp. So just be aware when you're downloading and installing extensions of where you're getting them and how safe that is. So if you get it from somewhere like Sketchication, that's a pretty trusted source. If you get it from some website way deep on the web that has all sorts of weird files in it, you may want to try to find something somewhere else. But generally, I leave this on unrestricted so I can install whatever I want. And then the last thing is just a little bit of a sequencing thing. So if you've ever used an extension like uh, like anything from Fredo, for example, um, it requires his built-in library, so his libfredo file, before anything else can work. And so the way that that works is if you try to load these and a libfredo isn't loaded then you're going to get an error message so from a sequencing standpoint if you're ever installing extensions that need a library you need to make sure that those are disabled and that you enable libfredo or the library files first so you want to make sure in sequence you enable the, the Fredo library file first and then you enable the other ones like joint push pull and the other ones so you don't get an error message. So that's how you can install different extensions in SketchUp. Um, this was 
part of my presentation at Basecamp that at some point is going to get uploaded. But for now, this should give you a really good idea of how to get extensions into SketchUp. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Was it helpful to you? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.